Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and today we're out here taking a look at the 2015 Audi A3 sedan. Now the A3 sedan will very soon be joined by an A3 hatchback, as well as the hotly anticipated A3 convertible. But for the moment, this A3 sedan is the only Audi A3 sold in the United States. At $29,900 starting, the A3 is competing directly with the Mercedes-Benz CLA 250, and in many ways it's also competing with the BMW 2 Series as well as the BMW X1 in kind of a strange sort of way. But I'd also expand the comparison pool for the A3 to something like a Volvo S60 because Volvo no longer offers the S40 in the United States, and I would probably include something like the forthcoming Acura TLX as well. Now because of the A3's price tag, a decent number of people have been asking me how the A3 compares with your average mid-sized mass market sedan at an upper trim level. So something like a fully loaded Ford Fusion or a fully loaded Honda Accord, how does that compare with the Audi A3? So we'll be talking a little bit about that later in the video. Audi has long subscribed to the one sausage multiple lengths philosophy when it comes to design, and I think it's very attractive for the A3, although the design is overall just a little bit less exciting than some of the new Mercedes-Benz designs out there. It's definitely elegant, but it's not quite as bold or as striking as the CLA. The A3 comes well equipped and it's attractive in all of its forms, rather than the Mercedes-Benz CLA where you get a slightly less exciting front end in the base model and a slightly more exciting front end if you opt for the sport pack. All A3s come standard with HID headlamps and you can opt for these LED headlamps which we have in our upper end trim right here. And these are full-time LED headlamps with high beams and low beams in the same module. Now the A3 is about the same size as the CLA which is about 10 inches shorter than the Audi A4. If you're comparing this to your average mass market sedan then you should know that the A4 is already smaller than something like a Camry or an Accord. Now, versus that Mercedes-Benz CLA 250, we have a much more traditional sedan profile going on right here. Part of that is because Audi was interested in more real creature comforts in the back than something like the CLA 250, which is trying to be more of a four-door coupe, whereas this is trying to be more of a traditional sedan. But also part of that has to do with the fact that the A3 platform is also shared with something like a Volkswagen Jetta, the Volkswagen Golf, and certain uh, versions of the Passat in various world markets. So the platform just had a little bit more room left in it than the Mercedes-Benz A and B platform. Of course, if you want more room, there will be that hatchback available and there will also be that two-door convertible available. And that's part of why Audi was able to give us a traditional sedan profile. So the people that want more of a coupe-like profile can get the convertible version and the people that want more practicality than the sedan can get the hatchback. Whereas the Mercedes-Benz CLA shoppers, they're trying to please everybody with that one same styling. So versus the Audi A4, the inches are lost both in the back seat, we get a much shorter door than the A4 for comparison, we get a smaller trunk as well, but an awful lot of the length difference between the A3 and the A4 is actually right here under the hood. Now even though the A4 can be had as a front-wheel drive vehicle just like the Audi A3, the engine orientation is very different. The A4 uses a longitudinal mounted engine, so it's mounted this way in the vehicle, rather than a transverse mounted engine like right here in the A3. Now this A3 was designed for four-cylinder engines, whereas the A4 was also designed to be able to accommodate Audi's larger V-series of engines, so it has a longer hood and there's a little bit more room wasted up front in that A4. Now I talked a little bit about the front wheel drive proportions in the CLA 250 and that certainly goes on for this Audi A3 as well. However, that's not necessarily that distracting when you park this right next to the other Audi models on the same lot because almost all Audis out there on the road have a very distinct front wheel drive like profile and that's just because of the way the engine is oriented under the hood. That re usually refers to the distance between the center of the wheel and the front of the bumper versus the center of the wheel and the front of the door. Personally, the profile difference doesn't matter that much to me, but a lot of rear-wheel drive purists dislike the front-wheel drive overhang that goes on on the A3 as well as the A4. All 2.0T models sold in America at the moment get the S-Line trim, which gives you this little S-Line badge right here. We also get some slightly different trim on the inside and around the front of the vehicle. Now, not all world markets do this, so do keep that in mind if you're watching this video from some other country. These wheels are also slightly different than you'll find in certain other A3 markets. The rear of the A3 is simple, attractive, elegant, and definitely a member of the Audi family. The definite family styling continues all the way around to the rear. We have these dual chrome exhaust tips in our 2.0T model which are quite attractive. And the one thing I did notice and I really liked about the A3 is that an awful lot of short sedans tend to look like they just got pinched off just a little bit too early. And somehow the A3 really manages to avoid that. I think it's possibly this slight little spoiler lip that's going on right here on the trunk lid, but something about the overall proportions and the shapes look very finished on the A3, whereas they don't on certain other small sedans. This really isn't that much bigger than something like a Ford Fiesta sedan, and the Ford Fiesta sedan has kind of a peculiar looking rear end. The A3's engine lineup starts with a 1.8 liter four-cylinder turbocharged engine. It produces 170 horsepower and 200 pound-feet of torque. 
That engine is mated only to a six-speed dual-clutch transmission, sending power to the front wheels only. Fuel economy comes in at 23 miles per gallon, 33 on the highway, and 27 combined. Most models I expect will be shipping with this 2-liter turbo that we're looking at right here and all-wheel drive. This particular engine produces 220 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque, and fuel economy actually rises ever so slightly to 24 miles per gallon in the city, 33 on the highway, and 27 overall, even though this is always mated to Audi's all-time all-wheel drive system. Now, the all-wheel drive system in the A3 is very different than what's found in the A4, A6, and A8 models. Instead of using a Torsten center differential, this system uses a Haldex-style clutch pack in the middle. So, there's really no true center differential. Instead, there's just a clutch pack that can connect or disconnect the rear axle or vary the amount of connection whenever it so desires. In the 2015 calendar year, a 2-liter diesel engine should return for the A3 model in the United States. Official power details have not been released, but I expect it to come in right around 148 horsepower and about 248 pound-feet of torque. That engine should return about 35 miles per gallon in the A3. Front seat comfort for the A3 comes in at 8 out of 10 points. Our particular model is equipped with the optional sport seats, which do offer a slightly larger range of motion than the standard seats. We also have this extending thigh cushion right here, which I really appreciate. We have a multi-way power driver's seat with a four-way adjustable lumbar support. We also have a manual tilt telescopic steering column with a decent range of motion. Base models of the A3 don't offer the same range of motion over here in the passenger seat as the driver's seat. Our Prestige Plus model, however, offers the same power seat controls for this passenger seat as the driver. Another thing to keep in mind that helps keep costs down on the A3 is that we don't have seat memory right here for the power driver's seat like you would find in certain other vehicles in this segment. Most notably the CLA 250, which strangely enough has power seat and memory controls for both the driver and the front passenger standard. Rear seat comfort comes in at 7 out of 10 points, which is higher than I thought it would be after having driven the CLA 250. The seat bottom cushion is a little bit close to the ground, which would be more convenient for children, but is a little bit less comfortable for adults. So you can see there's a decent amount of room between my leg and this seat bottom cushion right here. Still, I have about two and a half inches of legroom sitting behind myself. This front seat is adjusted for me at six feet tall, and I'm sitting right behind myself. Headroom is somewhere where the A3 is a little bit limited. This has about the same amount of headroom as the Ford Fusion, so I can't sit quite upright. I do have to cock my head slightly to one side in order to fit back here. However, this passenger seat right here was adjusted for a six foot five passenger I had in the car, if I can get my foot there in the foot well. And I have about half an inch of legroom left right here behind this passenger seat. Now that's considerably more than I had in the CLA 250. The CLA 250, I really had troubles even getting my feet into the foot well, let alone anywhere to jam my knees. Of course, the same headroom problem applies over here on this side. Now the other area where this is going to lag behind your average midsize sedan is going to be in middle seat accommodations because this isn't as wide across the back as your average mid-size sedan. Even so, your average adult could stomach this middle seat for a trip to lunch. So it is possible to fit three adults in the back. Headroom is still a limiting factor, but it is actually a little bit better than I thought it would be. These outboard seats are bucket shaped, but the difference between these outboard bucket seats and the center seat isn't as great as it might look. Rear seat passengers get a comfortable center armrest with a cubby for storage right here and two slide out cup holders that come right out of the front of the armrest. We also have 60-40 folding rear seat backs for additional cargo capacity. And that additional cargo capacity is likely going to be important because the A3 has a relatively small trunk. At 10 cubic feet, it is considerably smaller than your average mid-size sedan. It's at least 50% smaller than the majority of those mid-size sedan entries. I can fit three suitcases in here like I have right here. So this is one carry-on roller bag right here. This is one slightly larger than carry-on roller bag. And I have a, a bag of whatever that is in the trunk. I have a computer bag, and then I have yet one more roller bag right here. Now, most importantly, this is one roller bag short of what you can stuff in the Mercedes-Benz CLA 250. That CLA, even though it doesn't have a whole lot of rear seat leg room, it does have a fairly decently sized trunk. Once everything's out of the trunk, you will find a donut spare tire right here under the cargo load floor. You'll also find a very convenient grocery bag holder right over here on the driver's side of the trunk. Overall, the A3 actually scores 8 out of 10 points in our exclusive trunk comfort index. We do lose some points because the trunk isn't terribly tall. These roller bags can fit in their taller position upright, but that non-carry-on bag wouldn't fit right here in the trunk. It's also a little bit difficult to insert child seats in the trunk because this opening is kind of small. Let's take a quick spin around the interior. Over on the passenger side, we have our height adjustable seat belts. Our model has the four-way adjustable headrest. These do go up and down, although I'm 
having troubles getting kind of a purchase from here. They do up and down and forward and backward as well. Now, all models of the A3 do come standard with leather upholstery. That is kind of an interesting thing when Mercedes-Benz and BMW have both been moving towards pleather as a standard seat covering option in their vehicles. Now again, our A3 does have the sport seats, which means we get more aggressive bolstering right here on the side of the seats. Smaller drivers may appreciate this. Larger drivers may have a problem. They may think this is a little bit too aggressive. Since we have the sport seats, we have the adjustable thigh cushion right there up front. The door panels are a nice blend of soft touch plastics, and rather than just rehashing Audi designs that you'll find on the larger Audi sedans, the A3 actually has kind of its own style going on up front. That unique A3 style extends onto the dashboard and this soft injection molded dashboard. We have a little Quattro logo right there because we're in the 2.0T model. The soft injection molded plastics even extend lower into the dashboard. And this is something that you won't find in the BMW 3 Series, for instance, that 320i, which sort of kind of competes with the Audi A3, has relatively harder plastics lower in the dashboard. You won't find a wide variety of wood trims like you do in certain other competitors. Instead, we have more modern finishings going on in the A3's cabin. We have a relatively large glove box right here. You can easily fit a tablet computer, as you can see right in there, inside the glove box. To help save on dash space, Audi moved the optical disc player right inside the glove box. We also have two secure digital card slots and the SIM card for the MMI system that's in the A3. The SIM card is used because the MMI system also includes a 3G and an LTE modem for data downloads. All A3 models position their infotainment display right here in the dashboard with a display that slides in and out of the dashboard at the press of a button or when you turn the vehicle off. It makes the dashboard look a little bit cleaner than when the display is always up. Now the display size isn't as large as you'll find in some of the competition, most notably the BMW base models. However, it is a little bit larger than Mercedes-Benz command system. Now if you get the base Audi A3 then you do get a slightly smaller display. Because we have the navigation unit we get a slightly larger display. If you want to know more about Audi's MMI infotainment system then go ahead and click that link down at the bottom of your screen to be taken over to our Audi MMI review. Right here we have two large air vents in the center. We twist this chrome bezel to open and close the vent and then you can direct the air around by toggling this jet engine inspired vent. If I move it to the side you can also see these additional little ribs there on the side. Uh, and you can point it in any direction that you like. It does not rotate, however. Below the air vents, you'll find the main button bank in the car. We have a drive select button. This changes various vehicle settings. This is not standard on the A3. It is part of certain different option packages. Number of button blanks, which always serve to remind me that there was some other option that I might not have gotten. Parking sense button right there. Hazard lights, trash control off. And this button hides and reveals that Audi MMI display. Below the button bank, you'll find a dual zone climate control that is standard on our particular model. It is not standard on all A3s, however. Base A3 models do have manual climate control. Below the climate control, we have two relatively large cup holders. One thing I didn't like about this, however, is that the Germans still haven't figured out that Americans have relatively large takeout drinks. If you put a large takeout drink right here, it actually tends to bash these buttons right here on the display. It's a little bit more difficult to get the cup out of the cup holder. The A3 features a very traditionally styled shifter. S-Tronic means DSG in Audi speak. Right over here we have the engine start stop button. This is the volume control and track forward backward button for the Audi MMI system. I do find the positioning of this button a little bit peculiar. Here's how it works. We press down to turn on and off the system, we rotate for volume control, and then we toggle side to side for track forward backward. Here are our controls for the Audi MMI system. Toggle switch for navigation and telephone, radio and media. These buttons are contextual, so the screen will actually tell you what these particular buttons do. Menu button, back button, and rather than most of the controllers in the industry, this button does not toggle. So it doesn't toggle forward, backward, or side to side. It simply rotates and clicks down to select. The center armrest slides forward and backward and has multiple different adjustable heights. It's not a stationary armrest lid like you see in some vehicles. If we open that up, we reveal our USB charge only port. We also have an MMI interface port. Right now I have an Apple iPhone adapter plugged in right there. You can also plug in a USB adapter. Then you can fit a small amount of other goodies right here in this little compartment. It's not terribly large because, of course, the all-wheel drive system has to go somewhere in the A3. One thing worth noting is that that all-wheel drive system also reduces your cargo room. So we get about two cubic feet less in the A3 2.0T with Quattro than we do in the 1.8T front wheel drive. Our particular tester has the optional sport wheel. We have sport grips right here and up here. We have three spoke design, which is a little bit different than the standard wheel. And then we also have shift pedals, which you probably can't see from this vantage point. If I move the camera up there a little bit, you can see that we have shift pedals up on this side and down on the other. On this side of the steering wheel, we have our mode selector button. You can also set that as a favorites. We have volume up and down. We can click into mute. 
voice command button, and then a repeat navigation information button. On the other side of the steering wheel, you'll find the controls for that multi-information display that's right up there. This scrolls along that display. We click to OK. This changes into the option menu in each selection, and this moves between the various options in that system. We have navigation, phone, uh, or media, as well as trip computer. Like a number of European vehicles, you won't find dedicated track forward and backward buttons on the Audi steering wheel, and you'll find the cruise control on a stock right here behind the steering wheel. Accent lighting is always a little tricky to show in a car, but right here we have this accent lighting strip on the front speaker grille that's both on the driver and the front passenger side of the Audi A3. Our particular model is also equipped with the optional Bang & Olufsen sound system. The first thing to know about the A3 out on the road is that there are, of course, those two different engines in the A3, and they feel very different from one another. Primarily because the 1.8 liter engine is front wheel drive only, and the 2.0 liter engine is all wheel drive only. Now based on that and based on the power output of the engines, logically the A3 straddles either side of the CLA 250. So the 1.8 liter engine is a little slower than the CLA 250 and the 2.0 liter engine is a little bit faster than the CLA 250. That means that the 1.8T model scores 6 out of 10 points in acceleration and the 2.0T model scores 8 out of 10 points in acceleration. This was just about 2 tenths of a second faster than the CLA 250, which puts this right about as fast as the V6 midsize sedan competition. So if you get a V6 Altima or a V6 Accord, it's going to be just about as fast as 60 as the 2.0T model. This is also just about as fast as the Ford Fusion 2.0 liter EcoBoost. Now the Chrysler 200 is also going to get a large V6 engine and all-wheel drive, but we haven't had a chance to performance test that yet, so do expect those numbers at some point before the end of the summer. Now if that's not fast enough, Audi does plan on bringing the S3 to America at some point. Because Audi is planning on bringing a relatively larger array of vehicles to the United States, they were able to make this A3 a little bit softer, and that's something that I like. Although the A3 has a definite solid European feel in terms of ride out on the road, it is a little bit softer than the CLA 250, and I give this 8 out of 10 points in terms of ride. This is still firmer than you'll find in anything from Ford or Honda or Toyota, of course, um, but it's not exactly as harsh as the CLA 250. The CLA 250's springs are just really firm, and especially with the sport pack on the CLA 250, I really found it somewhat uncomfortable for daily commuting. If you are looking for a very firm Audi, then fear not, I'm sure the Audi S3 will probably be just as firm as that CLA 250 with a sport pack. The slightly softer suspension does have an effect on the handling. I give this about 8 out of 10 points. It is an excellent handling sedan, but it is not quite as good as that CLA 250. CLA 250 and CLA 45 AMG are probably the best handling front wheel drive sedans I have ever driven. And the A3 is a very close second, but it is second in this category. That means that this is much more dynamic out on the road than any of the midsize sedans. So this is definitely much better than the Ford Fusion, the Mazda 6, or anything else along those lines. Especially with the addition of all-wheel drive, the A3 feels incredibly sure-footed out on these winding mountain roads. The all-wheel drive system doesn't really do anything for your neutral handling because it doesn't affect the weight balance that much, but it does really help your on-power performance around these corners. The grip is absolutely incredible in this A3. There's some very good tire choices going on from the factory. Braking comes in at 8 out of 10 points, which is above the standard CLA 250, but below the CLA 250 with a sport pack. The CLA 250 Sport Pack really has some aggressive rubber and it also has some very aggressive cross-drilled rotors which do help in the stopping distance times as well as the heat performance times of that CLA 250. But compared to a Volvo S60, you can get a relatively nicely loaded S60 T6 front wheel drive for about the same price as the configuration of the 2.0 T A3 that we're driving right here. Now in that comparison, the Volvo is going to be the faster vehicle to 60. It has 300 horsepower under the hood, even though it is relatively heavy compared to the S A3, uh, it's going to be the faster car to 60, and there's just no way around that. It has 300 horsepower under the hood. The Volvo handles relatively well, but it doesn't handle as well as this A3, and of course it doesn't have all-wheel drive with that brand new T6 engine. So in terms of fuel economy comparisons, the S60 works very well uh, in front-wheel drive trim, but if you add all-wheel drive, then you get the six-cylinder engine in that Volvo, and the fuel economy really drops a considerable amount. It, it drops by about 30% or so, and it's definitely lower than this A3. Now in terms of fuel economy, I've been averaging 26 to 27 miles per gallon in this car in very mixed driving, which is extremely good. It's not quite as good as the CLA 250. I think some of that has to do with the fact that this A3 doesn't have auto start-stop, and the CLA did, and that really helped uh, the CLA's numbers. The weather's also been a little bit hotter while I've had this Audi A3, so the air conditioning has probably been running a little bit longer. Exactly how much of an effect that makes, I'm not entirely sure, but it should make a little bit of an effect. One enormous difference out on the road in this A3 is the transmission. 
Audi and Volkswagen Group have been at the dual clutch transmission for an awful lot longer than everybody else, and it really shows in this six-speed DSG style transmission. Audi calls it S-Tronic, of course. The CLA 250 felt very unsure of what gear it wanted at the time out on the road. It was always shifting, and some of those shifts were relatively harsh and relatively abrupt. That's just not happening in this six-speed transmission in the A3. Now, Audi's transmissions used to behave the same way as the CLA 250s did, so I feel sure that Mercedes is going to fix that at some point in time, but at the moment, the A3's transmission is by far the smoother operator. It's difficult to tell in the video, but since I complained about the sunshade in the Fiat 500 last week, I need to say that this transparent sunshade that's in the A3 also bothers me a little bit. It is a little bit more opaque than that Fiat 500 screen, but it still lets more light through than a solid sunshade in a typical sunroof would. Overall, the best thing about the A3 is just the balance of this car, and I'm not talking about weight balance, I'm talking about how well ride, handling, acceleration, braking, and value, etc., are all combined in this A3. If you take a look down my list, the vast majority of the scores have been 8 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 8 out of 10. It's very consistent across the board in this A3. And that's not like the CLA 250. The CLA 250 is a vehicle full of highs and lows. It has excellent handling performance and it has excellent acceleration, but the ride was fairly harsh. Uh, it had excellent braking, but um, you know it's not quite as fast as some of those V6 midsize sedan entries out there on the market. That's not happening with the A3. The A3 is just overall a much better balanced vehicle. I think that if I were to drive a car every day, the A3 would definitely be that car. In fact, this is one of the best cars I have driven this year, just in terms of overall balance. The, the CLA 250 may be better at certain things, but I think that if I had to choose between the two, I would choose the Audi A3 because it just suits me better. We also have a cabin that's very attractive. Now, if you do get the up-level cabin in the CLA 250 with that stitched leather dash, I do find that a little bit more attractive than the A3, but I think in general, the A3 cabin is a lot more attractive than the vast majority of CLA 250s that you'll find out on the lot. And that really does factor into my drive impression. Pricing for the A3 starts at $29,900 for the 2015 model year, and it does go on up fairly quickly, but it's not as quick of a rise as that Mercedes-Benz CLA 250, and the option packages are bundled together a little bit more conveniently as well. $32,900 buys you the 2-liter Quattro base that gives you all-wheel drive and the upgraded engine. I consider the Premium Plus the realistic base model for the A3. That costs you $32,450 for that 1.8-liter 4-cylinder model, and that will give you the luxury features you really expect in an Audi like keyless go, two-zone climate control, heated seats, as well as an iPod interface. The Prestige Plus model that we're taking a look at right here starts at $38,350. Our particular model is $40,000 as equipped and tops out at $44,200 if you fully load your car. That Prestige Plus package gives you all the goodies that we've been taking a look at in this car right here, like the LED headlamps, the fantastic Bang & Olufsen sound system, as well as the navigation software. On top of that, I would also add the $1,400 adaptive cruise control and lane departure prevention system on this A3. Audi's radar cruise control is full range on the A3, so it will take you to a complete stop, and it's strangely a very good value for the luxury segment. This costs you an awful lot less than the same radar cruise control system on that Mercedes CLA. I'd also get the $350 rear thorax airbags for the rear seat. Now, we do have a full curtain airbag along the back, but the thorax bags add a little bit of additional side impact protection for your rear seat passengers. Comparably equipped, the Fusion, the Accord, the Camry, and even the Mazda 3 are much better values than the A3, of course. That's really what they excel at. Those mass market sedans are designed for value. The A3, however, does a relatively good job even when you stack it up with that mass market competition, however. Even at $44,200 for the fully loaded version of the A3, it's really not that far off of the competition once you take every feature level into account. Of course, value and luxury seem to be at odds with one another, but the A3 does a relatively good job of that. Versus the CLA 250, this is a relatively good value. Compared feature for feature, especially in the upper level trims, this comes out a few thousand dollars cheaper than the CLA 250. It's even a relatively good value when you compare it against the Volvo S60. It's around the same price as that S60, even though the S60 doesn't deliver quite the premium brand that Audi does. If you compare the A3 to your average mainstream midsize sedan like a Camry, an Accord, or a Fusion, the A3 strangely does very well for itself. At that premium plus level, which is really my realistic base configuration, $32,450, this isn't exactly the cheapest option, but it does deliver a slightly better warranty. It delivers impeccable handling out on the road. You also get all-wheel drive, which you can't touch in the vast majority of those competitors. There's no all-wheel drive option on the Toyota Camry. There's no all-wheel drive option on the Honda Accord. And on the Ford Fusion, you're going to pay at least $32,000 
for an all-wheel drive system in that Ford Fusion. No matter how you equip your average mid-size sedan, none of them will handle or perform as well as this Audi A3. So the Audi A3, for that price difference, gives you the luxury image, improved handling, and you only sacrifice a relatively small amount of rear seat legroom. The A3 delivers an almost unbeatable combination of luxury goodies on the inside, fuel economy, handling prowess, acceleration, as well as value. I think that everything put together, the A3 is my new favorite car for the 2014 calendar year. This is a 2015 model year vehicle, so maybe I'll stretch that just a little bit. Of course, we have to wait till December to decide if this is officially my favorite car for this calendar year, but it's definitely in the running right now. Well, the CLA was definitely a car to include on your mid-size sedan shopping list with a decent number of caveats. They're a great deal fewer with this Audi A3. And I would say, unless you have fairly tall passengers frequently in the back seat, this is actually a good alternative to a fully loaded Ford Fusion, Honda Accord, or Toyota Camry. We do lose a decent amount of trunk space and a decent amount of rear seat legroom. Now, do keep that in mind. We have about 50% less trunk room than most mid-size sedans sold in America. And we also lose about two to three inches of rear legroom, possibly about an inch of rear headroom as well. However, you can put two six-foot people in the back seat of the A3. You can also put two child seats in the A3 and two real-sized adults up front. That's not something you can do with the CLA 250, and that really makes the A3 considerably more attractive. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been the 2015 Audi A3 2.0T sedan. Go ahead and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of my latest videos, including hopefully a full review of the hatchback, the diesel, and the convertible whenever I can get my hands on one. Go ahead and comment on this video. Tell me what you liked and didn't like. Share this video with your friends. You can also find me over at facebook.com slash alexonautos, and you can always email your questions to alex at alexonautos.com. I'll see you next week. Thank you.